Here's how the Hollow Earth theory explained the origins of Kong, Godzilla, and the MonsterVerse. There are a lot of questions you could ask about Godzilla, like, what does he do when he's not fighting off literal armies? Did that 1998 movie really happen? And why did Charles Barkley, of all people, dunk on him? We've already asked a ton of these right here on this channel, but today we're trying to answer where did Godzilla come from? Not like in real life, that's a question for another video, but in the MonsterVerse, the current Godzilla and Kong-filled cinematic universe, where do these colossal kaiju actually come from? Well, the answer lies in something called the Hollow Earth Theory. Slightly more believable than flat earth theory, which is to say, not at all, the hollow earth theory basically posits that there's a massive cavernous space inside of our planet that's home to all manner of fantastical creatures, ancient civilizations, and other phenomena. Now, for an exceptionally thorough explanation of this theory, I highly suggest reading Atlas Obscura's detailed history, but in the meantime, allow me to give you a brief overview. Now, the Hollow Earth theory has been around since the 17th century when English scientist Edmund Halley, as in Halley's Comet, decided the answer to strange readings on his compass had to be that the Earth was made of spherical shells, nested inside of one another like Russian nesting dolls surrounding a central hollow core. The theory evolved in 1818 when American Army officer and merchant John Cleve Sims Jr. published Circular No. 1, which simplified Halley's model of the Earth. According to Sims, there were massive holes at the North and South Poles that essentially acted as giant gateways to this world within. And as you probably expected, these came to be called Sims Holes, which has a very different meaning depending on how much you played The Sims in your youth and whether or not you kept ladders in their pools, which if you didn't, well, let's face it, you're just like us. I declare that the Earth is hollow and habitable within, Sims declared in his infamous circular. I pledge my life in support of this truth, and I'm ready to explore the hollow if the world will support and aid me in this undertaking. And by support, Sims meant he needed 100 brave companions, well-equipped to start from Siberia in the fall season with reindeer and sleighs on the ice of the frozen sea. I engage, we find warm and rich land stocked with thrifty vegetables and animals, if not men. But don't worry, he did promise he had everyone back by spring. Now, Sims never managed to make his voyage to that great vegetable and man-filled paradise inside the Earth. His theories were widely ridiculed, and he continued to advocate for the theory in spite of getting continually dunked upon until his death in 1829. Sims, though, wouldn't be the last person to believe wholeheartedly in this theory, and it's grown and evolved considerably since his ill-fated attempts at exploring the Earth's innards. While there is no one accepted interpretation of the Hollow Earth theory, most versions of it allege that the interior of the Earth is a verdant paradise that's home to lost civilizations, massive plant life and animals, and that there's a smaller inner sun which provides warmth and light to create the hollow earth's ideal conditions. Sure. Now, some say it's home to the Ten Lost Tribes, others claim the lost Viking colonies from Greenland dwell within there, and still others believe that Nazis escaped there during World War II and traveled inside the Earth where they lived idyllic, fascist, immortal lives. Phenomena like Aurora Borealis is explained away as gas from within the Earth escaping the entrance portals to the hollow Earth. Even some seemingly inexplicable things like UFOs, they don't come from outer space, they come from inside our own planet deep in the hollow Earth. So how does all of this tie into Godzilla vs. Kong? in the MonsterVerse? Well, the Hollow Earth is supposedly where these massive monsters come from in the first place. The idea was first introduced in Kong Skull Island. We learn all about Monarch, the covert organization that monitors these powerful creatures all over the world. One of Monarch's researchers, Houston Brooks, wrote a paper positing that Earth is hollow, which cryptozoologist William Randa is hell-bent on proving. According to Randa, the MUTOs, or massive unidentified terrestrial organisms, if you're nasty, or titans if you've been paying attention, are gigantic creatures that lived in sprawling underground caverns beneath the Earth's surface. By dwelling within these subterranean spaces, these titans were able to avoid detection for so long, and when they finally did emerge, their existence was kept secret by organizations like Monarch. The 1954 Castle Bravo nuclear tests weren't test, as Randa explained at one point. They were trying to kill something, something named Godzilla. Now, these underground spaces were also alluded to in the tie-in comic book series Skull Island, The Birth of Kong, which referred to this mysterious land full of murderous megafauna as a gateway to hell. We also learned that Kong is the last of his species and his race lived in a gigantic cavern on Skull Island until these skull crawlers emerged and began systematically slaughtering these towering apes. But Skull Island is far from the only entrance to the Hollow Earth. In Kong Skull Island's post credit scenes, we learned that Kong was not the only king and see archival footage with cave paintings of other monsters like Ghidorah, Mothra, and Godzilla. 
As we learned in Godzilla King of the Monsters though, the Hollow Earth might be more than a theory in the MonsterVerse. It turns out it's very real. It explains how they traverse the Earth so quickly using massive underground passages like shortcuts for a globe-sized clue manor. And we see hints of those ancient civilizations as well in King of the Monsters, when Dr. Serizawa heroically sacrifices himself to save Godzilla by detonating a nuclear weapon to supercharge this mammoth monster inside a gigantic underwater temple. Who built it? One of those ancient civilizations. And even more clues abound in the end credits of King of the Monsters, which feature a series of slides with redacted text. That text tells a story about how the Hollow Earth ruins predate all known human civilizations. And those civilizations that lived there worshipped the Titans as gods and even developed telepathic communication with them. However, eventually things turned ugly as some humans attempted to control the Titans as weapons, leading to a gigantic war between man and monster. The resulting conflict led to a cataclysm that triggered the Ice Age, sending the Titans into a state of hibernation, only to awaken years later thanks to mankind's meddling, climate change, and nuclear weapons. And as we explained in our trailer breakdown, the first Godzilla vs. Kong trailer confirms the theory about not only the Hollow Earth, but this war between man and Titan. It features shots of Kong in the Hollow Earth, wielding a giant axe, fighting other Titans known as Warbats, and surrounded by futuristic ships, presumably belonging to those ancient, highly advanced civilizations. As for what other aspects of the Hollow Earth theory we could actually see in that movie, well, we'll just have to wait and see what happens when Godzilla vs. Kong hits theaters and HBO Max on March 31st. But tell me, what do you think of Hollow Earth theory? Do you buy it as an explanation for the emergence of monsters like Kong and Godzilla? What's your favorite conspiracy theory that's not problematic? Let's discuss in the comments below, and for all the latest and greatest in the world of pop culture, keep it tuned to Nerdist.com.